Revenge films. I have a younger sister who my parents adore much more than they do me. I was lucky because my grandmother and friends were kind to me and they made up for the love that I didn't receive from my parents. Anytime I needed someone to talk to, I would go to my friends instead of my parents. At the age of 21, I began seeing a man who was introduced to me by a friend. We dated for three years and then he proposed to me. Of course I said yes. My fiance came from a good family and he was eventually going to take over his father's business as the CEO. He was three years older than me. His parents were really nice people too. They treated me better than my own parents. I knew that now that we're getting married, my fiancé and his parents would need to meet my parents at some point. Up until now, I hadn't talked much about my parents to my fiancé, but it was time for me to do so. At the same time, I couldn't keep my fiancé a secret from my parents any longer. My parents can be odd. Just ignore them if they say anything inappropriate. I'm sorry for all this. That's alright. Meeting the in-laws is not an easy thing for anyone. I don't expect things to go as planned. If I want to marry you, I need to figure out a way to get along with your parents. I loved him so much. He had a positive attitude about everything, and he made me really happy. It was a day for my fiancé to meet my parents for the first time. When I got to my parents' house, I was annoyed to see my younger sister there, too. It bothered me that she was staring at my fiancé, and with a wicked smile. I was certain that she stayed home out of spite so that she could ruin this day for me. Your fiancé is so handsome. What do you do for a living? I work at Scott's Corporation. That's why you seemed familiar. I saw your interview in a magazine the other day. You're going to take over the company from your father when you retire, right? You're a catch. My sister continued to flirt with my fiancé, and she didn't seem bothered that I was standing right next to him. My parents weren't any better. I had come here today to introduce my fiancé, to my family, but they acted like I wasn't even there. All they did was talk about my fabulous younger sister. After my fiancé went home, my mother said this to me. He's too good for you. A man like him should get married to someone like your sister. You should break up with him so that he could get married to Miranda. She wasn't making any sense. That's crazy! I'm engaged to him! And I'm the one marrying him! Leave Miranda out of this. His parents are excited that we're getting married. It's official. Don't treat me like something that can be returned and replaced with something else. Miranda is the good one in this family. Look at how beautiful she is. I am sure that over time, your fiancé will see that Miranda is better suited for him. I knew that my parents favored Miranda over me, but now they were being absolutely ridiculous. I was hurt by their words and went over to my fiancé's house crying. I told him about what my parents had said to me earlier after that. It's a shame that your parents don't seem to understand how much I love you. Thank you. That makes me feel so much better. We decided to ignore my parents and go ahead with the wedding arrangements. The only thing that was difficult for me was the fact that I still lived with my parents and sister under the same roof. When are you going to break up with your fiancé? You don't deserve to marry a man like that. Even if you do get married, he's going to get sick of you and cheat on you. If you don't want to get hurt, you might as well give him to me now. I started to spend more nights at my fiancé's place after that. I hated being around my own family. I would only have to put up with them for a little longer. One day I was in my bedroom, and I put some money inside the safe of my bedroom. The safe meant a lot to me because I inherited it from my late grandfather. I went out for a few hours that day and came home to my bedroom, which had been turned into a huge mess by someone. Who did this? As I was asking myself these questions, my parents and sisters came to my room with evil grins. What a shame! Now that your money is gone, you won't be able to pay for your wedding. Uh, what do you mean? I know that you put some money aside for your wedding and put it into that safe. I took the liberty of taking the money and spending it on myself. What are you saying? Uh, that money wasn't for my wedding. That money wasn't even mine. What? Whose money is that then and why was it in your safe? Well, um... We're listening. The money belongs to our aunt. Her daughter Nina is buying a new home and the money is for the down payment. Grandma asked me to safe keep the money for a while. I had no idea. Why did you say anything to us about the money? I didn't have a reason to. That wasn't your money's to spend. And how are you going to pay back the money? This is your fault. You can pay back your aunt. You caused this misunderstanding. I did no such thing. How did you find the key to my safe? I can't believe that you went through my stuff. That's an invasion of privacy. Anyway, I'm going to tell my aunt and grandma about what happened with the money. Hold on a sec. How do you even think that would make us look? Have you ever thought about that? 
You have no right stealing the money regardless of who it belonged to. You're responsible for this. And I can't believe you did this out of spite for me. Why do you hate me so much? My parents and sister urged me to not make the phone call, but I ignored them. After my aunt and grandma found out about what my parents and sister had done, they came over and were furious. My aunt was furious with my mother and our sister. She yanked my mother's hair. Oh, why would you do such a stupid thing? Explain it to me so I understand. Regardless of the reason, I expect you to pay back every cent. The money was for my daughter, not you. I'm sorry, please stop pulling my hair. You're hurting me. My grandmother was glaring at Miranda. Oh, do you think you caused enough pain to your sister already? What more do you want from her? You're being selfish anyway. I can't stand to watch you three bullying Mia anymore. I'm cutting all ties with you. I want you three to pack up your things and get ready to move out ASAP. Wait, Grandma? That's not what happened. I just thought that Mia's fiancé would be happier getting married to me. We're a better fit anyway. You have no idea what you're talking about, Miranda. I don't understand how you and me are sisters. You couldn't be so different from one another. You need to work hard to pay back the money that you stole from your aunt. You're not getting away with this. But Grandma... Miranda was devastated to hear our grandma's harsh words. And you. I don't know what you were thinking. I never understood why you favored Miranda over Mia. You're their mother. You shouldn't be playing favorites. What's the matter with you? I'm cutting you out of my life and my will. Mom, you're joking, right? I'm your daughter. Please do not do this! This is all a big misunderstanding! I am sure that if we sat down, we could come to some sort of agreement that works for all of us! Please do not cut us out of your will! Too late. I've already decided to cut you three out of my life. I never want to see you again. And you're not invited to Mia's wedding either. Mia will have a nicer wedding without the three of you to ruin it for her. In the end, my grandmother agreed to give my aunt the money that was stolen from her in exchange for my parents and sister moving out of the house and never contacting us again. I'm sorry about this, Mia. You were doing me a favor, but it ended up causing you more trouble. With the support of my relatives and friends, I had a beautiful wedding. I'm glad that my parents and sister weren't in attendance. My parents and sister moved into a small apartment after being kicked out of the house. My grandmother was wealthy, so my mother grew up not understanding what life was like without money. Now she was learning the hard way. She hadn't worked a day in her life, and she took on debt to pay her living expenses. In the end, she had so much debt that she had no choice but to work day and night doing menial tasks. My father was on an executive board at my grandparents' company, but now he is being kicked out of the company as well. My aunt sued my parents and sister for the money they stole from her. In the end, the three of them had to pay back a total of $50,000 to my aunt. That's the least they could do to pay for their crimes. My parents spoiled my little sister, so she didn't know how to do anything for herself. She was basically helpless. In order to pay back some of my parents' debt, she sold all of her expensive things that my parents had bought for her in the past. Miranda too had to find a job to help pay for the living expenses, but Miranda wasn't very pleasant to work with, which caused her to be fired every time she started a new job. My grandmother demanded that they send full salary to her until they returned the $30,000 that they initially stole from my aunt. I hope that they finally learned their lesson. How was today's video? If you enjoyed it, please subscribe, like, and leave a comment. Stay tuned for more.